Well, this is just the start of rivalry week. Other key games, including the one next, Missouri and Kansas tomorrow night, Florida and Tennessee. More Big East action later in the week, including game day at Louisville. On Saturday, Georgetown in town. And if somebody's going to make a run at Georgetown, well, Louisville might be the team. Of course, it's Notre Dame right on Georgetown's heels right now. Now, West Virginia picks an interesting game, too. Oh, that is, what a blood <laughs> that is. Unbelievable. You remember the first time you were in the arena at West Virginia and that mountain gun fired off that musket? Yeah, I was under the desk. Oh. That wasn't because of the musket. <laughs> Been out a little too late, perhaps, the night before. You were on your best behavior, though, last night, Bill. Acker carries the three. And congratulations to uh, you and all the Giant fans out there. Uh, what a great well, win. I think I share with you, uh, just listening and reading about Tom Coughlin and Eli all year, I'm so happy for both of them and the Giants. And just, they took everything, just did their job, and incredible response coming down the stretch by Eli. You know, it's amazing, too, when we talk about the media and how the media can tend to latch on to certain things and stereotypes become the reality for many people. But you know, this image of Tom Coughlin over the years as this unfeeling, cold human being, Matthews, uh, I've had the pleasure of knowing he and his family for a long time, seen firsthand the amazing charity work that they've done through the Tom Coughlin J Fund, starting in Boston, continuing to this day in Jacksonville, helping families dealing with leukemia, and the millions of dollars Tom and his family and a great army of volunteers down in North Florida have raised to help a lot of families. Mm -hmm. I think if anybody actually took the time to get to know Tom Coughlin, uh, they'd know he's very much a very uh, kind, decent, loving, and compassionate human being. I couldn't be more happy for him and for Judy and their great family. Well, he'll be much kinder and more compassionate now that he's a Super Bowl champion. He'll be recognized as such. Finally. I mean, boy, what a great... I, I can't remember a better football game. That was a terrific How about game. Jack Harbaugh said it was the best football game he has seen. How about that? And he's national seen a lot. champion, national champion of Western Kentucky. And Jack Harbaugh coached football for more than 40 years. Of course, he's Tom Crean's father-in-law, the dad of John Harbaugh, the new coach of the Ravens, Jim Harbaugh, the Stanford coach. Joni Harbaugh Crean will be the disappointed bride of Coach Tom Crean tonight. A difficult loss here for Marquette, battling all the way to the end, but in the final minute, still down by 14. They sure are, and Tom's still coaching down the end, too. This is all about the season. Not just one evening. Louisville out of the gate early, got their confidence, got their legs. Excellent defense. Just unable to convert some timely shots. Largest lead was 23 for Louisville. They never trailed in the game. Started the first half with a 10-2 run. Ended the first half with a 9-3 run. We had a 10-2 run to start this second half. Well, they continue to have the upper hand in this rivalry and about the kind of handshake you would expect in this kind of rivalry as well. Final score, Louisville 71 and Marquette 57. Rivalry week continues with Missouri and Kansas for Jay and Bill Sean McDonough saying so long from Milwaukee. Let's send you to Lawrence. Here's Ron Franklin. Okay, Sean, welcome to ESPN Big Monday here in Lawrence. It is a Bud Light part of the rivalry week presented by Cisco. Even every Monday, it is sponsored by Bud Light. The starters in this ball game, well, we'll talk about that in just a moment as uh, Lawrence is going to the line. First free throw that we have had in tonight's ball game, and he will knock it down, and it makes it a 5-3 ball game. Brandon Rush has got into the flow early with a three and then a great feed to Arthur. Chalmers slipped down, gets back up, gets the pass. Darnell Jackson, Bolfus, who picked up an early foul, may have just picked up his second. Mike Anderson is up, and he's not fussing at the officials. He is fussing at his player. That's the second foul on uh, Vitas Volkus. We mentioned Brandon Rush. He had knocked down a three. He easily could have shot that ball, but instead found the open man, Arthur, on the cut down the lane. 
Little zone now. Mike Anderson told us they would be unpredictable. Rush, his second, no, it was a two. Steve Olson, one of the umpires tonight, puts up two fingers toward the scorer's table. So five points for Rush early. Volkus knocks it down. Are you surprised that Mike Anderson has decided to leave him in the game with the early two fouls? You know, he doesn't have much choice, Ron. They don't have a lot of depth up front. They're going to try to play some zone and keep him from committing that third one. Kansas took it right inside of Missouri also. Carroll, a running ball blocked by Jackson. And in the backboard, it'll be picked up by the Tigers. Shot clock is now at 10. Volkus, and he was fouled, but it was inside the three-point line. So let's take a look at our Star Watch show brought to you by Bass Pro Shop. And here are the starting lineups for tonight. It'll be Keon Lawrence, JT Tiller, Lawrence, Volkus, as we said, already two fouls, and Damari Carroll going up against Robinson, Chalmers, Rush, Arthur, and Jackson. Let's take a look at the Star Wars, which, of course, is brought to you by Bass Pro Shop. Damari Carroll, the transfer from Vanderbilt. By the way, the coach's nephew and Darnell Jackson, the senior from Oklahoma City, having a tremendous year for Bill Self. Volkus gets that one as well, and we've got a tie ball game at seven. And Volkus will go to the bench now, and into the lineup is uh, number 23, Justin Safford. And he's been playing more and more, working himself into playing he has. time. Coming off a career high nine points in that win over Kansas State on Saturday. Kansas likes to go inside early. Sasha Khan out high, working against Safford. Ed Hightower, our referee tonight, Steve Olson and Ted Hillary, the umpires, Jackson. Nice ball movement by the Jayhawks, and Jackson scores the two. Here's Tiller, coming off a great game against K-State at the other end. He was fouled, I think that was Jackson who knocked him down. A little bit of full court pressure, but that's the antidote Mike Davis has. He will attack. Sasha Khan, I beg your pardon. It'll go against Sasha. See the dribble penetration. And if I would have told you before the start of the season, Ron, that Darnell Jackson would lead Kansas in 20 point scoring out outputs, you probably wouldn't have believed that. No. But he has he has really stepped up. He knows it's the last time around, but also. He has trimmed himself down by uh, in the vicinity of 20 points and his endurance and also his mobility have really improved, which I think has helped him considerably. See a little 2 2 1 press. They will mix it up. There's a lot. Card. <laughs> Actually, he'll get credit for the basket, but I think Damari Carroll is the man who touched it last week. Look, look that way. Tiller. They're trying to get it up and down the floor and catch KU in transition. And the Hawks were back. Well, they never mind running with Kansas, but Kansas the deeper team this season. See a little zone now. They will mix up different zones, presses. Rush. Nope, off the mark on that one. JT Tiller, sophomore out of Chicago. 20 points against K-State. Well, Darnell Jackson has been affected Damari Carroll early, first with the block and then forcing him to pull up. Jackson, they collapse on him, and that's going to be a push in the back by Safford. Now, Kansas loves to throw the alley-oop play, but watch, keep your eye now. Does Carroll get a piece of it? He does. Ball gets tipped in. But because, the, yep. because Sasha is closest to it, he gets credit. Russell Robinson will go out of the ball game, a substitute of the ball game. It's going to be Sharon Collins, and he comes in after three minutes and 59 seconds. Bob alley oop for that one, a little too strong by Collins. We'll take a timeout. 1555 left opening half, Kansas by a pair over the Tigers. Uh, tickets, 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 dude, tickets, tickets, dude, 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 dude,
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Bud Light. Endless refreshment from start to finish. Bud Light keeps it coming. And in part by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. And Sonic. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. And we're back in Lawrence, 11 to 9. The Jayhawks on top. And now let's check in with the third member of our broadcast team. Here's Holly Rowe. Holly. Well, thanks, Ron. It's been a very difficult week for Missouri basketball. After an incident January 27th, Mike Anderson suspended five of his players. But he said he had to do it because he has a very clear idea of what he wants Missouri basketball to be. The brand that I want. It's going to be fun fast, exciting basketball. Kids will graduate. They will represent the university in a first-class manner on and off the floor. And see, not only that, I'm big on family. So when you talk about family, I'm like the father. So the father has a discipline, you know, and I think that's just part of it. So uh, I'm the father, I'm the mother sometimes uh, to, to these kids. Five suspended players, four now have been reinstated tonight. Jason Horton and Daryl Butterfield are dressed and available to play if the coach so chooses. Only Stefan Hanna remains suspended indefinitely. He's at home in Chicago recovering from surgery to a broken draw after that altercation. Okay, Holly. Strong to the hoop and Teller will score it as you look on the bench. Butterfield to the left and Horton to the right. I salute Mike Anderson and what he did. A lot of coaches don't have the fortitude to, to step up and say I'm going to I'm going to you know put guys uh, out of a position to play that are starters and regular contributors. I've been in that situation Ron and when you're building a program you have to build it with a foundation of discipline respect and hard work and, and so accountability accountability so a loss or two because of suspension will pay off over the next few years. Unbelievable. Two Tigers were there, and Sasha Khan came in between the two of them. Sasha Khan, Darnell Jackson, the seniors, are shooting about 67% from the field between them. Deep in the corner, three-pointer. He got it. Nice shooter's roll. It's going to be a two. That's Keon Lawrence, the sophomore out of Newark, New Jersey. Bill Self told me today that Missouri runs their offense as well as anybody in the league. They, they run motion offense. There's a lot of freelance screening movement. Good execution. See the 2-3 zone. Collins. Chalmers for three. There are so many underrated players on this Kansas roster in terms of trying to pinpoint who the best is. Chalmers shoots 48% behind the arc. Got it. Damari Carroll, double figures in rebounds, five of the last 11 games besides what he does offensively. Rush off to Chalmers. He'll drive the baseline. He missed the slam. And the whistle and foul is against the Tigers. And who's getting up? It looks as though Justin Sappard. And that is two fouls on him quickly. Chalmers, we know about his defensive prowess. He knocks down a three, and then he takes it to the rim and almost gets the dunk, but gets the foul. Leads the Big 12 and assists. Steals. Chalmers gets the first. Meanwhile, Sharon Collins has walked back across midcourt and is talking to his head coach and trying to explain why that alley-oop was four feet higher than it should have been. Well, Chalmers, is he better this year with the basketball? Certainly would appear so when you look at field goals and also assists uh, to turnover ratio. He's had a complete season for Bill Self. He gives the Jayhawks their swagger. Chalmers will go to the bench. Russell Robinson is back on the floor. And we have an 18 to 15 ball game. Does Bill Self have a nice seven man rotation to get started? Seven starters? I'll tell you, I like what I see from the Tigers right now, though. I mean, they're playing a little shorthanded, and that ball accidentally kicked by the Lions, touched last by the Jayhawks. And Lions in the ball game, so we get an answer on that one right there, whether he will play tonight. Horton, uh, let's see, he still has not moved. Now watch their offense now, Ron. A lot of ball movement, screening. 
Keon Lawrence. And it's a two-pointer yeah. just yeah. inside yeah. the arc. And a little bit of one-on-one -on -one as well from a guy that averaged over 30 points a game at Weequayock High School in Newark, New Jersey. Lions, a junior out of Kansas City. Very consistent player. Double figures in 11 of the last 13 ball games. He was terrific on Saturday in the comeback win over the Wildcats. Rod Stewart drives the middle. Pass a little too hard to rush, and it's a second turnover against the Jayhawks. I guess what I'm saying about the Tigers, shorthanded, yeah, but, uh, you know, <laughs> there is no fear in this ball club. I know this huge rivalry to them, but there is no fear, and they've come in here and gotten off to a very good start, but a lot of clubs kind of bend under the pressure about this time. It's a one-point game right now. Remember the great game they played in here a year ago, Mike Anderson's first game in Allen Fieldhouse, 80-78. Christine Sasha Khan sends it back. Robinson on the wing. That's a two-pointer on the way, and he got it. He had seven different leading scores for the Jayhawks throughout the year. Hard to really pinpoint your defense on one player. You know, this is a team that slowed down DJ Augustine at Texas and also Kansas State's Michael Beasley. Hard to do that with this Jayhawk team. Keon Lawrence against Russell Robinson. Really good matchup right there. Robinson with the quick hands knocked it away for a moment, but it came right back. Anderson in the lineup also. Anderson, of course, the son of the head coach. Bouncer inside. Stewart maybe got away with the travel there. Robinson for three. Not there. Rush guys for the rebound and reverses it. Misses. Caught on the follow. Scores and he was fouled. Wow. Well, credit Brandon Rush. First, the defensive rebound on one end where he skied over the rim. And then a tremendous offensive rebound for a guard who's averaging seven rebounds a game. Take a look at this, Ron. Look how high Rush gets up. You think that knee's okay? Damari Carroll picks up the foul to his first. I tell you, that's a lot of chances on the offensive end for the Jayhawks. And the Tigers were trying their darndest to box out and get the basketball, and they simply could not do it on that sequence. Kansas is like a football team that can run the ball and pass it. So you have to stop them in transition. You have to slow them down inside in the lane. Hard to do. the three-point play. Largest lead of the evening for the Hawks. Six points. Well, and normally this pace would favor both teams, but Missouri still shorthanded and foul trouble now. Depth could be a problem. Marshall Brown into the lineup. That was touched last by Brown. Brown thought that Stewart touched it last. It'll go over to the Jayhawks. 23-17 Kansas. Okay, accessibility. So you have an urgent package ready to go. Well, just drop it in UPS Dropbox. They're everywhere. Or log on to UPS.com and schedule a pickup. Or take it to your nearest UPS store. Or you can hand it to any UPS driver and they can take it from you. It's not just accessibility. It's accessibility with UPS. Let's give them a bigger smile. to 17 our score here in Lawrence and rivalry week uh, shaping up as great as usual the fact that home say that five times rapidly rivalry week rivalry anyway <laughs> the, really good lineups and of course our friend Dick Vitale will return on Wednesday of this week almost fitting that he's coming back for Duke Carolina in Chapel Hill so we welcome Dickie be back we're glad everything went well he had a speedy recovery and boy will he be anxious to get back on the air I, 
NFL tomorrow. Rivalry week continues on ESPN, 7 o'clock Eastern. The Wolverines take against uh, Ohio State. And at 9 o'clock Eastern, it's the Board of Gators against the Tennessee Volunteers. Missouri comes out a little bit more full court pressure. Missouri's defense is like a Jamie Moyer pitching repertoire. A lot of junk. Some pressure, some zones, a little bit of man. They played boxing one on Beasley on Saturday. Let me ask you something. Yep. Everybody talks about the 40 minutes of hell, which uh, Mike got from his mentor at Arkansas, Nolan Richardson, as Russell Robinson misses on the drive. This is a great example of they don't go that way the entire time. Actually, it's mixing up, changing up the pace, isn't it? 40 minutes of confusion yeah. for the opponent, yeah. I think. But I think as the athleticism and the recruiting grows here, you'll see more and more full court pressure. For Mike Anderson's team. Stewart did not get it to go. And it's uh, rebounded by Volkus. In fact, Saturday I thought they really flummoxed a young Kansas State team because of all those junk defenses, Ron. Boy, sent back to the vengeance. Leo Lyons tried to put up the shot. Collins at the other end. Uh, he's left J.T. Tiller standing still like the Statue of Liberty. 7-0 run by the Jayhawks. Three-pointer not there. Here comes Collins. Outlet pass to Chalmers. Trap in the corner. Back out and going to be stolen. And this is Keon Lawrence, and he will score it. I think Russell Robinson just wanted to get rid of it. I guess he had an opportunity to call timeout. He didn't do it. And Lawrence just outworked Collins for that steal. So they put it into that uh, quick 7-0 run that the Jayhawks had and also silenced this crowd for the moment. Con inside. You and I have watched the improvement and growth on the offensive end of Sasha Khan over his four years. See, usually good ball movement from Missouri. Offensive foul, Marshall Brown. How has Brown handled the fact that no one looking at his numbers, his numbers are half well, he's in playing time. Yes, he's always been that tweener power forward. He's uh, not really perimeter oriented, and you could get an example right there as he ran Robinson over, the senior from Austin, Texas. And Horton comes into the lineup. So there's an answer on him of when the suspension would be lifted by the head coach, Mike Anderson. And Jason Horton, a senior out of Cedar Hill High School in Dallas, has played very, very well this year, particularly on the defensive end. A little bit more zone now. Matchup zone. Chalmers, quick release, in and out, not lucky on the shot. And it looks as though they hit. There's Nolan Richardson right there. The mentor of Mike Anderson and the crowd not wild with that call right there made by the referee in high terror. So Marshita Anderson sitting uh, to his right. Darrell Arthur just picked up his third foul. When we, when, we mentioned, when we talked about Mike Anderson last year, he told us it was about 20 minutes of hell in his first season and about 20 minutes of what the heck we're doing. But gradually, as he improves their recruiting, and he's got a six-man class coming in, you'll see more and more up-tempo. Carroll trying to work against the freshman Aldrich, and he will score. Cole Aldrich uh, into the lineup. The freshman out of Bloomington, Minnesota, Jefferson High School. And and he went right by him. Excuse good me, recognition. He saw the freshman doesn't really like to guard away from the basket. There's Aldrich right there. But on the other end, he did a great job of sealing Carroll and burying him underneath the rim. He made him disappear. And Butterfield is preparing to check into the lineup. Carroll, bounce pass, traveled underneath. Well, the spacey looked as though it was not good underneath. Watch out. Cole Aldridge makes Carroll disappear on the post up. He buries him, and it's an easy target for the teammate on the perimeter. 
And you say there's another big body. Well, she was a lot heavier when he was in high school. He has dropped a considerable amount of weight. Not saying that he won't gain some back, but it'll be good weight. Collins, left hand, tries to pass it off and turns it over. Well, that's one of those times you don't want your point guard leaving his feet. Usually, Sharon Collins can get away with that and find an open man, but that time Aldridge not ready for the dish inside. Fourth turnover committed by the Jayhawks. See a lot of touches. You see good spacing by Missouri. Butterfield with the bounce pass out high to Brown. He's going to pull up and take an 18 footer. Won't get it. Darnell Jackson will rebound. 29 21. We're under eight minutes to play. Opening half. Lawrence Fieldhouse in Lawrence, Kansas. So let's check in quickly with Reese Davis for Sports Center 30 of 30. All right, Ron, the story dominating the sports world, Bob Knight resigning effective immediately as head coach at Texas Tech. Knight won two, uh, 902 basketball games. No men's coach in Division I has ever won that many. Much more on SportsCenter coming up after the game and on college game night later tonight as well. Tom Brady, Randy Moss, after their Super Bowl disappointment, will miss the Pro Bowl due to injury. SportsCenter coming up after the game. ESPN News you can always stay current. IBM presents the 25 greatest players ever. Number 25, George Mikan. Known as the big man with the big black glasses, George Mikan had vision on the court that belied his poor eyesight. This three-time All-American led DePaul to the 1945 NIT Championship. IBM, getting it done. And we will count down the top 25 every night of college basketball and going to announce the number one player of all time. And that's going to happen on March the 8th during the uh, North Carolina and Duke game. A couple of Jayhawks will probably be under consideration. Danny Manning, Will Chamberlain. I think Clyde Wavellett, JoJo White would be in the top 100 somewhere. Great players of all time. Mark and Aldrich, the freshman, gets the rebound, and it looks as though Butterfield fouled him. Big Monday presented by Bud Light. We're here in Lawrence, Kansas. Ron Franklin, along with Fran Fraschella and Holly Rowe. You look at Mike Anderson, the second-year coach of the Tigers of Missouri. We stand at 29-21, with 7-27 left to play in this opening half. You talk about how deep this Kansas team is. You see Mike Anderson, Cole Aldridge, a McDonald's All-American, has not cracked the rotation yet, although he's going to be a pretty solid player in his career here. You know, in the last couple of weeks, he has looked more mm -hmm. self-assured in the short times that he did come in as he helps his team take the largest lead of the night at 10. A good spacing, good ball movement, good screening. Kansas coaching staff very impressed with the way the Tigers run this offense. Butterfield. Boy, Rush, his leg as well. Uh, more spring tonight than we've seen from him. He's got some monster rebounds so far. Jackson. Well, Darnell Jackson, four 20-point games we alluded to. Stretching his range as a player on the offensive end. This is a 15-4 run by KU. Lawrence, Matt Lawrence this time misses on the shot. Jackson rebounds. See, Rush could have taken that shot, Ron, and that's the unselfishness of this team. Guy shoots. Sometimes, sometimes you hurt the team when you pass up on a shot like that when you shoot 44% behind the arc. Bouncer goes into the freshman Aldridge. You see the collapsing on him at a double team, and there they get a tie ball, but it's going to stay with the Jayhawks. This telecast is available on ESPN HD, presented by Olivia, live and in color. Bill Self. 
Rush cannot get that one. Aldridge gets the tip, not there, and it's Lawrence who comes down with the rebound. Matt Lawrence, the junior out of St. Louis, who has 140 career threes on his own. Tittle left all alone, couldn't get it. You know, great sign of respect. Matt Lawrence is being guarded much differently now that he's become a weapon. Well, Chalmers, I don't think he realized he was going to be open that far. Alley-oop at the other end and score it. Nice That's ball handling JT and Tiller. give the two to J.T. Tiller. There's a good example, Ron, of Missouri not backing down. They're going to play their game and get up the court. Ten-point ball game right now as we hit the five-and-a-half-minute mark. A little bit of a matchup zone now. It's very flexible like silly putty. On the wing is Rush. He's not missing too many of those. He gets his feet set. And the knee is fine. The reason he wears the brake brace is because of an insurance policy. Because he's going to be a millionaire someday and there's no reason to take any chances. Well, that was a mistake right there to throw the ball behind at the back. Just what you've said so many times. Not back into traffic right. where the other team can take it right to the hoop. Never save that ball on the your opponent's first person. Basket. Uh, just throw it out to midcourt. Okay. Darnell Jackson picks up the foul. It's his first. And it is the team's fifth. At the line shooting two is Leo Lyons. about Brandon Rush, Ron, a guy that had surgery in June. Take a look at the penetration. Buries the shot. Took him about five months to get back to form. He's just rounding into it, and the knee is fine. He uses that brace because Bill Self and his coaching staff knows he's going to be a first-round pick eventually. Well, he's got eight points. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. You guys, actually, Brandon Rush is now to the point where he can practice without that knee brace. I saw him yesterday go full hard on in a practice with no knee brace, and again today at the shoot-around. Coach Bill Self says, if anything, it's more mental for him to have that as protection. He also said, you know, I saw him for the first time rise up off of that one bad leg and get a great elevation in their game on Saturday. He feels like he's completely back from the ACL tear. Okay, thanks, Holly. As I mentioned just a moment ago, his elevation tonight with the brace on looks better than we have seen him this year. That ball touched last by Missouri, but right into the hands of Sharon Collins. Shot clock is at 12. Collins way outside. Missed everything. The outlet pass by the Lions caught at the other end and was not caught. Lost the ball. Damari Carroll, they got it right back to KU. Collins left hand. Won't go. Wow, look at that. They'll run it right back on. This one will go easily by Carroll. Pass is hit by Damari Carroll. And we'll step aside for 30 seconds. 10 point ball game, 36 26. We'll be right back. Thirty-six, twenty-six. are scored. Right now, let's take a look at our rivalry recap presented by Sonic. 259th meeting. Kansas leads at 165-93. KU leads at 84-33 in Lawrence. And in fact, in recent years, since 1994, it is a 12-1 advantage over the Tigers here in Allen Fieldhouse. So many great moments. Bud Stallworth's 50 points against... Uh, Missouri, Big 8 record at that time. Hasn't always been this way, though. When Storm and Norman was there, they uh, they did their share of damage, didn't they? Yes, they did. Stewart blocked from behind, and a jump ball is called. It's going to go to the Tigers. So they keep picking away here, and I have to think if Mike Anderson is looking at right now we're down by 10, would love to get that to 5 or 6 by halftime at least. Just trim it. J.T. Tiller, 35 minutes each of the last two games after only being on the court about 16. Boy, Rush was right there with Lawrence. He thought he was going to have an opportunity <laughs> off that pick to turn and shoot, but he sure didn't. Lions. <laughs> so we'll take a timeout. Score remains the same. we got 3.49 left until halftime. Reese Davis with you coming up on the UPS halftime report. Bob Knight has called it a career, an end of an era after 902 victories. Digger Phelps, Stacey Dales here will have reaction, hear what Knight had to say himself and what his legacy will be. 
ballgame. Uh, Coach Knight has stepped down. As we all know, uh, I'm not surprised. Are you? No, no. We both saw it in the last few years. He was, uh, he's getting, hey, he's getting tired. He coached 42 years. That's uh, incredible. Let me give you an example. Joe Paterno has coached 500 college football games. We all know Joe Bob talks about he's tired. Bobby Knight coached his 500th basketball game 25 years ago. And it's, I'll tell you this, when you walk on the court, it is the same amount of emotional uh, with just with all that you go through yes. that it is in football. So you darn right he's tired, right? You know, and I, he, he's done it on his own terms, and I, that is no surprise at all. I agree with you. Carroll, nice move and a good follow right there. Those That's Lions the tips it back in. And the other thing I know he's excited about, no more news media <laughs> ever. There won't be a press conference, I don't think. I would be surprised. Did you get a chance to do some fishing? I think that probably he's already called his good friend Jerry McKinnis at Little Rock, and one of those trips has already been planned as Rush goes along the baseline and drops in the runner. People don't re really realize how good Brandon Rush is, Ron, because he's an unassuming star. He's an outstanding defender. I was going to say, talk about that. Everybody looks at his offense, oh, but yeah. if you're a pro scout, Chalmers all the way. But if you're a pro scout, what he does defensively has to excite you. Well, you remember last year in the Big 12 tournament, he probably did the best job on Kevin Durant of anybody on the Jayhawks. He's a very good defender for a guy his size. Shot blocker from the guard spot. And he's really bothered Matt Lawrence tonight. The Lions knocked down some big shots on Saturday just from that same spot in that win over Kansas State. Well, as I mentioned earlier in the game, is a trap on Collins. He gets the pass out to Chalmers. 11 of the last 13 games that the Leo Lions has been in double figures. And the Tigers get it right back. They can cut it under 10. Blocked by Chalmers. Carroll needs to take it strong at the rim. He finessed it to the other side. And he shot it down. He made himself yeah. about 6-1. That's exactly right. And the 6-1 Chalmers got the shot block right there. He should have taken it right to the rim. And if not dunk it, take it right through Jackson. Tiller's going to get a breather here with 2.09 left until halftime. And it's going to be Horton, the senior out of Dallas, who will come in. Lions well in and out on that shot two minutes left in the first half boy a pass by Collins about four feet from the big freshman and he was not looking for that one at all at the other end Hawks get lucky as Aldrich gets the rebound and they don't suffer a penalty for the errant turnover uh, two straight plays by Cole Aldridge where he wasn't ready for passes. Missouri is 0 of 6 from beyond the arc. Collins got it. Yeah, remember the young man missed six games in December with a stress fracture. Just starting around back into form. Lions strong to the hoop. Not there and he was fouled. Watch Aldridge post up. He sets the screen. Now he rolls, but that gives Collins just enough room to get by his man baseline. Cole Aldridge picked up his first. That's the seventh team foul on the Kansas. 18 fouls against the Tigers. Lions. Holly Rowe. Well, guys, talking about the resignation of Bob Knight, the Big 12 commissioner, Dan Beebe, is here tonight, and I asked him for his reaction. He said, you know, Coach Knight has made outstanding contributions to the game of basketball, and he was such a major influence throughout the coaching profession and on all of his student-athletes. He said he leaves an indelible mark on all of college basketball. Shackleman on the way, and he got it. And I'll tell you what, cannot go unmentioned or unnoticed the amount of publicity that he brought to a young fledgling Big 12 conference. If Bob Knight is not out in Lubbock, Texas, how many times and like last year when he goes for the record? What, yeah, what we, we do? 12, 13 games out there last year? We got a lot of frequent flyer miles going to Lubbock. <laughs> sure have. I know, it, I know just, every restaurant in Lubbock, Ron. He, uh, you know, he just brought, he brought attention to the league. 
Shot clock is at 10. Collins for three. And Collins getting his stroke back. Shooting just under 40%. A lot of weapons. Largest lead. Mike Anderson may have been hoping to get it down under 10. Right now, he is down 14. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> Bob Knight never has been, uh, you know, just really fond of the media. And this happened, what, a couple of weeks ago, breaking his uh, grandson. Anybody got a question? You want to answer questions? That's huh? good. You're getting off to a good start. I don't think anybody here knows anything but Grandpa. About this game, you, you said, oh, agree. We go. You did good. You did really good. You <laughs> evaded every question they asked. When the thing they asked, you asked. That's how it Coach went. Knight, a couple of weeks ago, maybe uh, a little bit longer with his grandson. You know, and, and as his friend Bill Parcell said, if you're going to want me to be the cook, let me shop for the groceries. Well, Pat Knight, the replacement, has shopped for the groceries because he's done most of the recruiting. So these are really essentially his players now as he takes over this program. Well, for people who have a question, Shane, you should look at a quote. The thinking was that. For Pat and for his team, most of which is returning next year, the best thing for the long run of this team would be for Pat and his staff to coach these remaining 10 games. It's like when you bring up that star out of up, up from AAA to get the, some seasoning at the end of the season, Pat Knight will be much more experienced as a head coach this time next year. Horton passed up uh, an open shot right there. Lawrence got it. That's a tough shot in the run. Horton very unselfish on that uh, move just before. Collins to the hoop. Ball is blocked. Out of bounds. It'll stay with KU 1.6 seconds on the clock. Bill Self, a very crafty tactician now. 1.6. Let's see if they've got something in in their back pocket to get a quick shot. He thinks play number two will work. <laughs> we'll find out what play number two is momentarily and so Darnell will. Jackson's about to come off the bench and come in replacing uh, Stewart so will the rest of the Big 12 now as they watch this game on film a little screen a screener uh -oh. Darnell Jackson and that's it. exactly what they did they got what they wanted and it, they missed it so as they head to the locker room Brandon Rush 10 points four of seven and also had four rebounds we are at halftime with our score, Kansas 45 and Missouri 33. Holly Rowe. Coach, you were worried about the pressure of Missouri. How do you feel like your team handled it so far in the first half? I thought pretty good offensively. I thought we did a lot of good things, and we got the ball to the paint. But uh, our guards didn't contain well to start the half, and that's how our big guys got in foul trouble. You got Darrell Arthur on the bench with three fouls. How do you manage him now in the second half? Well, we won't start him. We won't start him. Hopefully, we can get him in there about the 16-minute mark. All right. Thanks, Coach. Okay, Holly. As we said, 45-33. And now let's join Reese Davis, Jigger Phelps, and Stacy Dales. They've got the UPS halftime report, folks. All right, Ron, 12-point lead for KU at the break. Jayhawks looking strong again. Bob Knight is a polarizing figure, always has been throughout his 42-year career. His defenders staunch and passionate, saying that his contributions to the game and the way he's handled his players far outweigh any occasional temperamental flash or outburst. His defenders are just as passionate, as detractors I should say, saying that all of those uh, moments have outweighed and tarnished his glorious career. One thing that's indisputable, Knights won 902 games and three national championships, and after that 42-year career, he has decided to hang it up, effective immediately resigning as a head coach at Texas Tech. All right, here is what Knight had to say, and being reached for comment afterwards, said, quote, I've never really known when I was going to step down from this job. As I thought about it, my first thought was at the end of this season. Knight went on to say the best thing for the long run for this team would be for Pat and his staff to coach these remaining 10 games. Pat Knight, his son, has been the head coach designate and will take over effective and neat immediately as head coach of the Red Raiders. Bob Knight, his resume has been 
uh, unapproachable by virtually anyone else who ever coached in college basketball and led the Olympic team to gold medal in 1984. He won the three national titles when he was the head coach of the Hoosiers. 902 victories, most in Division I history among men's coaches. 42 seasons starting at Army, the glorious run at Indiana, and then bringing national prominence to the Texas Tech program in recent years. Digger Phelps, Stacey Dales here now. And Digger, I think the question is, it's not so much that people didn't expect Bob Knight to retire, Ron Franklin and Fran Fraschilla saying they weren't really surprised by the decision. But what about the timing? What do you think about doing it in the middle of the season as opposed to the end? I think the timing was right for Bob Knight to make it this way. When there's a change of administration, you never can trust that change. It happened to me at Notre Dame, it happened to Denny Crum at Louisville, and yes, there is a new president at Texas Tech. Gerald Myers, the athletic director who hired Knight, yes, he even blessed the fact that Patrick will take over. That doesn't mean if Knight stayed at the end of the year between the trustees, maybe another administration, change whatever went on inside, they can make that difference. But Knight said this, I want Patrick to take this team over now. I talked to Karen, his wife, tonight on the phone. Are there any health issues? None whatsoever. So I said, did you like what I said in halftime about Patrick? Except she said, yes. Where's Bob? Well, he's out, but he forgot his cell phone. That doesn't surprise me. That's typical Bob Knight. But I felt that when he made this move, Stacy, he now knows that Patrick's got 10, day, 10 games to coach these kids, and he recruited these kids, Patrick, as did Bob. And this gives that transition period to get ready for next season. Yeah, and I don't think there's, it's really a problem here in terms of the timing. If you want to talk about the timing of this resignation, I, you know, you're, you're taking over with Patrick. And Patrick, I've covered this team. I've covered this team in the Big 12 for, throughout the course of a season. He's a terrific X's and O's coach. He is actually the guy that manages much of the practices and the scouts for Bob Knight. So, and he's also a very good bridge for these players. You know, Bob Knight, you love him or hate him, but he's an excellent basketball coach. Digger, you've talked about it. He's a teacher. Point blank, he's a teacher. He teaches the kids how to play basketball, run the motion offense, better than anybody else really does, and how to get out and defend people. But Patrick controls the X's and O's. He handles the scouts. And again, he's that bridge for the players. So he's going to be a good guy to take over this team. What surprised me, but didn't surprise me, he talks to Pete Newell for an hour and a half on Sunday. Pete Newell was a great coach, coached the Olympic team, coached University of San Francisco. Knight has always had great respect for the guys that passed the torch to my generation, who's now passing it down to the next generation, Knight's son being that example. But Claire B., who coached LIU and was a great coach back when Nat, Nat Holman and CCNY had those battles in the garden, he took care of Claire B. when he was athletic director at New York Military Academy. He made Hank Iba honorary Olympic coach in 84 for the way we lost to the Soviets in Munich back in the early 70s. And Pete Newell is like a father to Bob Knight. So for Knight to talk for an hour and a half to Pete Newell to say, Pete, this is my thinking, this is what I want to do. If Pete Newell, Newell blesses it, Knight goes with it. And Knight, is, certainly his respect for the history of the game has never been questioned. Hank Iba, uh, Mr. Iba was the head coach of the 1972 Olympic team and got to experience the victory in 1984 when Bob Knight led the Americans to gold in the Olympic Games. So Bob Knight stepping down after his run at Texas Tech, his career ending after 42 seasons. Pat Knight will finish up the rest of the year as head coach at Texas Tech and be the head coach going forward. Still to come on the UPS Halftime Report, the Cardinals go on the road, emerging power in the Big East, and we'll give you the latest on the Tar Heel point guard and his status for the upcoming battle against Duke. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Cisco. Welcome to the Human Network. Victoriously. This is the UPS Halftime Report. Number two against number three, but will number five be in the lineup for the Tar Heels? Taiwan Lawson sprained his ankle against Florida State yesterday. His status for the game against Duke to be determined after the Heels practice on Tuesday. Roy Williams has said 
not terribly optimistic that his speedy point guard will be able to go by then. We'll have to wait and see on Wednesday night. And the impact of Lawson being out of the North Carolina lineup was evident against Florida State. He was hurt four minutes into that game. And he had 21 turnovers in that overtime win. And 21 turnovers, you've got to be at Duke looking at this tape and saying, you know what? We're going to ball pressure all over full court, half court. We're going to play the passing lanes. And we're going to get points off turnovers, which is what Duke's M.O. is. That's the guy that Carolina's got to figure out how to get him the ball so he can have his big double-double. I mean, 23 points, 21 rebounds like he did. But when you look at Ty Lawson missing this guy with Bobby Fraser, yep. this is a different team in transition. It is a different team, and it's offensively. It changes the pace for you. And one of the ways that Maryland beat this Carolina team on Carolina's home court was because they made him play a half-court type game. They got him to slow down. You don't have Bobby Fraser. You don't have Ty Lawson. So the pace changes. You know, I covered a Boston College team last week, assistant coach Pat Duquette, and he said, we feel we have a chance if we make them play a half-court game. Suddenly, other teams are going to start to think they have a chance to beat this Carolina team if Ty Lawson struggles with this ankle injury because the pace changes. And that's going to be the big question for Carolina. Can Quentin Thomas manage the pace? Yeah, Quentin Thomas is a veteran. He's been around for a while. He's certainly not lost. And now the turnovers might have disrupted the chemistry, but he only had two of them of those 21 against Florida State. At least, if nothing else, a veteran presence will be in the lineup if Ty Lawson is unable to go against Duke on Wednesday night. Much more coming on the UPS Halftime Report right after this. This halftime report is delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? Okay, delivery intercept. Well, say you just shipped the package to New York and it's on its way. When your customer calls and says, hey, I gotta run down to DC for a few days. Well, now what? Well, what if you could intercept the package and have it sent back? Or better yet, reroute it to DC. Well, you'd have those options if you shipped with UPS. It's not just delivery, it's UPS delivery intercept. Oh good, cherry blossoms are out. This halftime report is delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? Brandon Rush in double figures in the first half. Kansas up by double figures, a 12-point lead rush with the 10 points unofficially in the first half of play. Bob Knight, the headline story, stepping down to Texas Tech reaction from Pat Knight not long ago. Uh, just, you know, some we've seen for the last year, you know, after uh, last season. Uh, it, you know, he's just tired. You know, that, that's the bottom line. You know, he's done it for 40 some years. What more can you win? What more can you do? And, and he just thought it was a really good chance for me to get my feet wet before um, next season. You know, we got a lot of good young kids coming back. They can get used to me now instead of, you know, the springtime and, and have to wait till next October to see what it's like. And um, he's just tired. You know, today was a, the, the most relieved and, and uh, peaceful I've seen him in a long time. 42 years, a glorious coaching resume, much more on Bob Knight's resignation coming up on SportsCenter immediately following Missouri and Kansas and also on College Game Night around 1230 Eastern Time tonight. Second half from the fog coming up not too far away, Kansas with a 12-point lead on Missouri. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Cisco. Welcome to the Human Network and Red Robin Gourmet Burgers, creators of insanely delicious burgers. Somebody was trying to use our card, but I took care of it. Chase fraud alerts you can act on instantly. Agent Protection matters. Chase what matters. Agent. Whoa, 
Well, Missouri and Kansas share a border, but it may as well be a line in the sand. Yeah, Kansas and Missouri, they hate each other. It goes back to the Civil War since Quantrill's raid. And they've had bad blood ever since. I hate Missouri. <laughs> they hate us. We hold grudges. It's always war. So we honestly hate each other. We're going to kill them. Welcome back to Big Monday, presented by Bud Light, all a part of Rivalry Week, presented by Cisco. It's number five, KU Plain, host to the Missouri Tigers. 45-33, our score at halftime, and you have to wonder, if you're just the fly on the wall, what Mike Anderson said at halftime to try to turn his ball club around. Well, he's tried to junk the game up, Ron, but really, ultimately, they're a fastball team, and unfortunately, Kansas are fastball hitters because they came out roaring, and it started with Brandon Rush. This team moves the ball as well as any team in college basketball. They play with no ego. Whoever's open gets it and usually knocks it down. So back to live action. Russell Robinson working against Keon Lawrence. Jackson left him on, and he throws to an open con, and Sasha Khan had the ball blocked. One thing about Kansas, first four minutes of each half, they pound the ball inside to soften up that defense. Well, you can tell by the reaction that uh, the foul is against Kansas. It's against Sasha Khan. It's his third. Well, Keon Lawrence got off to a really hot start. Of course, on the other end, Brandon Rush, Sasha Khan quietly because this team does kill you softly having so many weapons I think Bill Self was unhappy with that call he felt Sasha Khan put his hand straight to the ceiling and Eddie Hightower made the call that nope he reached in well now he joins uh, Darrell Arthur with three fouls for uh, KU and remember what he told Holly Rowe with Arthur with three. He was going to sit for a while. So the freshman gets an opportunity. And Bill, Bill Self is uh, trying to uh, get his point across. He thought that there was a foul on the pass. But pass interference. Tiller strong to the hoop wound up being a pretty doggone good pass and Lawrence will score it. Well, that's been one of the Achilles heels for Kansas. They've given up dribble penetration. Rush couldn't get it taken down by the Tigers. Justin Safford at the other end blocked by Jackson. Carroll will go to the free throw line. Well, I'd love to take another look at this. Now we talked about Damari Carroll attacking the rim. Looked like Jackson got a lot of ball here. Let's see if there's any underneath contact. Good effort by Carroll taking it right to the rim. Oh boy. Woo. It looked like he got all ball and remember hand is part of the ball as well. Carroll first one on the way he gets that one. But remember in the first half Ron Carroll babied that layup. That time he took it hard. He's got an opportunity to move into double figures, but misses. So he has nine. And Missouri starts out early here in the second half, cutting it under double figures. Good pressure by Tiller. Robinson for three. Now he's only shooting about 23 percent but you can count on Russell Robinson to step up in clutch situations. Keon Lawrence pressure by Russell Robinson the outlet pass goes to the opposite side though and Rush has the ball blocked he was fouled out on the floor. Second foul against J.T. Tiller. Well, I mentioned the fastball reference. Mike Anderson has no problem usually with an up-tempo game. But the problem with that is it plays right into the hands of Kansas, who averages 80 points a game. First foul on the Tigers. Two fouls on the KU to open the second hand. Chalmers misses. He'll go to the line. 
Well, college basketball Super Tuesday. Tomorrow, rivalry week continues on ESPN. 7 o'clock Eastern, Michigan faces off against Ohio State. And then at 9 Eastern in the SEC, it's the Florida Gators and the Tennessee Volunteers. Remember, Tennessee pounded the eventual national champion a year ago in Thompson Bowling Arena. I'll tell you, Florida's got some rebounding to do. They got pounded this weekend over in uh, Fayetteville. A young team going on the road in the SEC. You kind of get your clock cleaned on occasion. Good young coach in Pelfrey for Arkansas also. Nice. Now, same problem that Kansas had with Kansas State's guards, Ron. Dribble penetration has reared up and Bitten Kansas last few outings. Tiller is really turning up the pressure here, both offensively and defensively, though, as far as what he's bringing to the table. And that's going to be Volkas, and that should be foul number three. He got too early in the first half, and you saw why Mike Anderson uh, had trust in him because he's the type of kid who's pretty careful. Picks up the foul, his second. Well, this has been an Achilles heel for Kansas. You see how easily JT Tiller beats Mario Chalmers, something Bill Self has been very vehement about with his experienced backcourt. Three pointer on the way. Too hard. Aldrich skies for the rebound, comes away with it. Bill Self gave his team a pretty stern lecture yesterday about a lack of defense and how he deplores that kind of play. Well, when Kansas is at their best, their guards put great pressure on the ball. And if you beat them off the dribble, there's usually a shot blocker inside. Carroll and Aldrich did not come out and uh, pick him up. Now, you notice the last two possessions, they got right after Cole Aldridge with Damari Carroll. Darnell Jackson. Turn move in and out. Aldrich on the follow misses. Got his own follow and he was fouled. And that foul is going to go against Damari Carroll. Now the freshman from Bloomington, Minnesota heading towards double figure rebounds tonight. Doing a really good job of keeping this miss alive. Take a look at the missed shot. Watch him roll into position. Good quick jump. It's eight, actually nine rebounds yep. for Cole Aldrich. This guy was three-time Minnesota Defensive Player of the Year, McDonald's All-American, averaging about nine minutes a game. And he gets a chance, Ron, to practice against Sasha Khan, Darrell Arthur, and Darnell Jackson every day. So you will see his improvement once uh, those guys clear out and graduate. Got this one as well. Should go with nine rebounds. He's got six points. That's a career high in rebounds for him, by the way. Keon Lawrence. Well, once again, dribble penetration, that time beating Russell Robinson. Fearless, these uh, Missouri guards. is down right here in front of us. So let's take a timeout. 56-42. Jayhawks on top. We'll be right back. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship coming in March. All right, great. Well, you already love the reliability of the big brown truck. But let's say you're shipping something really big or pallets of lots of little things. Now, wouldn't it be great 
if you could send any size shipment with the reliability and tracking you're used to with UPS. Hey, look, now you can. It's not just freight, it's UPS freight. Throw some mud flaps on here. Reese Davis with you. It is time for the Dunkin' Donuts Dunk of the Night. And it came in the Louisville Marquette game as Jarrell McNeil went flying over the Cardinals and was able to baptize the masses, but not much else went well for the Golden Eagles on this night. Louisville won the game 71-57, but McNeil got the Dunkin' Donuts Dunk of the Night. 56-42, our score, rivalry week. Presented by Cisco and, of course, Big Monday. Brought to you by Bud Light. Take a look at that injury just a moment ago by Damari Carroll. He went down like a 7-10 split and bowling right there as Jackson, I think, pushed Damari's teammate into the back of his leg. And so he had to go to the locker room. We'll get a report just as quickly as we can of the extent of that angle. Looked as though he was, he was grabbing his high ankle. See how quickly Brandon Rush closed to the shooter. Lions off the mark. Tigers get it right back. Lions with the left hand. Very solid offensive performer. Really improving as a junior. Former teammate of Brandon Rush in summer ball. And at the other end, Rush with two more. And you like to see him use that dribble. Lions not there, maybe a little quick on that possession as the head coach kind of shakes his head. Boy, the only thing Brandon Rush needs to add to his game is a little bit better movement off the dribble, but he's got the whole package for a big guard. Russell Robinson gets it back out on the wing. Chalmers not there. Is it going to be Aldrich or is it going to be Stewart? Now well, the first thing Bill Self wanted to know is how Mario Mario Chalmers fell down. Aldrich his take, third. Take a look right here, Ron. Now, that might be a good no call actually. I think Chalmers lost that ball off his foot before there was contact. The line shooting two is JC Tiller. Tiller. Check in with Holly Rowe on that injury to Carroll. Well, guys, Tamari Carroll is actually just now walking back out of the locker room onto the court. They say that it's cramps in his legs. Now, he already has some leg issues. He wears those big, heavy gray sleeves because of shin splints. And the personnel from Missouri is saying it was just cramps. They took him to the locker room so he'd have a little bit more room to stretch out. And here he comes. Okay, Holly. You have to wonder if those long things, as tight as they are, <laughs> might cut off part of the circulation and cause cramps. I'm going to leave that for the training uh, staff after the game. They do a good job on those screens. Those big guys get out and show. Well, Stewart threw it a little hard, turned over by KU, and the Tigers will get it back. 13 point lead, Kansas. Horton back in the ball game. And Matt Lawrence will go to the bench. They've done a really tough job on Lawrence tonight. They really have. He's known as a really good shooter. You mentioned Brandon Rush, probably one of the best defenders in the country that people don't talk about because he's so good offensively. Tiller. Blocked by Darnell Jackson. And that was set up because Tiller could not get by Rush off the dribble. out of bounds by Kansas. By the way, front court foul trouble. Aldridge, Kahn, and Arthur, all three with three fouls apiece. Ron Jackson gets a chance to knock this into the stands. Take a look because Brandon Rush, his defense is so good. Tiller was not able to get to the lane, and I think you and I could have made that block. Shot clock is at five. Keon Lawrence way too hard. Kansas right now going with four guards and Darnell Jackson. And Rod Stewart is the designated screener. Let's 
good anticipation by Lyons as he goes over the press table trying to uh, hustle and get the basketball. Arthur prepares to check back in as does Chalmers. What makes Kansas so dangerous, they can play four smalls, they can play big, they can play inside, they shoot it well, they're great in transition, and they share the ball. Stewart and Russell Robinson are go to the bench. Now we'll keep an eye, Arthur, as we mentioned, one of the three bigs with three fouls. Jackson as well. Chalmers suspended and a nice job defensively. That was Keon Lawrence who was up there, and at the other end, they score the layup with JT Tiller. And Missouri's not going to change their style very much. They're going to try to put the pressure on you on the offensive end. They don't pressure as much defensively as they'd like to because of depth. They're good athletically. He's a great example. You told me he's a triple jumper. I do is a track guy. Yep. And also an engineering major, young man from Wheeler High School. Right outside of Atlanta, he teamed up with J.J. Hickson, the freshman star at NC State. Three fouls for him as we're just about 13 minutes to play in our ball game. 11 point Jayhawk lead. Arthur. Good ball movement against that zone. Safford misses. And the alley oop at the other end. And Arthur didn't try to jam it home. But he stays with it, Ron. And Brandon Rush said, my fault. They threw that lob a little off target. Mike Anderson wants a timeout. Standing ovation from the locals here at Fog Allen Fieldhouse. Call 27 left. Big KU. Tonight on Sports Center, why Bob Knight's coaching days are likely over. And don't miss the best of a college basketball legend. Plus, is America actually glad the Patriots lost the Super Bowl? Find out. Sports Center next. is available on ESPN HD presented by Olivia live and in color 6247KU let's take a look inside the play brought to you by K Jewelers take a look at this Ron sneaky good zone offense play right here you got the two guys on this baseline right here Rush is going to run to the corner. It's going to take this guy with him. They're going to screen the middle inside and watch how open Darrell Arthur is right here. Three versus two. Wide open. Can't do it any better than that. It's like in football when you put three receivers on the side of the field with two defensive backs. Just find the opening. Darrell Arthur with six points. He's got three rebounds and Rush gets a breather right now. Kansas has seven starters. There is no drop off when they go to the bench. Safford back from the lineup. This is Horton. And Horton blocked Russell Robinson. Skip pass. <laughs> And that was with a capital S. Closest person to it was that man right there, a very unhappy Bill Self. Wow. You do not want to pass the ball to your coach. <laughs> that will get you taken out of the game. If Bill had stood in his chair, he couldn't have caught that ball. Turnovers, uh, Kansas 10 and uh, Missouri 5. Bill was talking today about the great double overtime win he played in in the Big 12, excuse me, Big 8 tournament back in 83 over Missouri. Sent Oklahoma State to the NCAA tournament, coached by Paul Hansen. Good ball movement by Missouri. They run good motion offense, but it's been defended well. But a ball tipped from behind. Robinson almost caused a turnover. Shot clock is under 10. Four seconds, down to three. Safford left alone, but he traveled on the way to the basket. Timeout, timeout, 11 and a 
and a half minutes left. 62-47 at Hawks. When it comes to rivalries, this one's nearly impossible to put into words. If history has anything to say about this game, you won't want to miss it. Duke, North Carolina, Wednesday at 9 on ESPN. I'm Reese Davis with your Sports Center 30 at 30 update. Bob Knight resigns as head coach at Texas Tech, effective immediately. Knight won a record 902 games in his 42 year career. His son, Patrick Knight, takes over. Sports Center coming up after the game. Much more on Bob Knight. You can stay current with ESPN News. Okay, Reese, thanks so much. We have 11 and a half minutes left in this one, and it is 62 47 Jayhawks. Sharon Collins, they come up to trap on him. And a good test for Kansas. Missouri changing their defenses. Robinson dishes, fouled Arthur. Lou Perkins, the athletic director here at uh, Kansas, sitting on the sideline. Had a good seat last night for the Super Bowl game. In the Gatorade press box right in front, Peyton Manning. Yeah. We looked, we did the double take. Is that Lou Perkins? Turned out it was. Volkus just picked up his fourth personal foul. the second one as well and Volkos will come to the sideline and uh, Brown will come in replacing him this is uh, well the largest defeat against Mizzou this season is Michigan State by 16 this one a long way from over We'll see if the Tigers, how much they can cut this one down and get back into it. Well, remember, Missouri has played a very, very difficult non-conference schedule. You look at the likes of Michigan State, Maryland, Arkansas, Illinois, Mississippi State, Purdue. Probably the most BCS teams of anybody in college basketball. Well, let's take a look at the Cisco game track. You see right there, very efficient for... Kansas on the boards and Missouri 0 for 9. Not really a surprise the way Kansas defends that line and Missouri comes in shooting only 33% from behind the arc. And Bill Self will be happy with his three-point defense, but the dribble penetration game has uh, hurt the Jayhawks. You know, I was in Starbucks this morning and the young guy behind the counter saw, saw me, Ron, and he said, hey, what's wrong with the Jayhawks? One loss. <laughs> Fickle group here. Well, it's like when Hubert Davis was here working with me a week before last, and the attendant, as we uh, handed our parking pass, the individual was standing there talking to another person about football. And Hubert said, We're coming to a basketball game, and they're talking football here at KU. I think people in this part of the country take for granted that Kansas has won 34 of 36. The only two losses coming to UCLA in the West Regional Final and then obviously in Manhattan, Kansas last Wednesday. Mario Chalmers picked up that foul. And the runner, it is good by Keon Lawrence. Well, again, dribble penetration has been Missouri's main offensive weapon today, and that's something Bill Self will go over quite a bit tomorrow in the film session. Collins left alone. Arthur was fouled. And let's go down to Holly Rowe. Well, guys, Darrell Arthur has had trouble staying out of foul trouble the last couple of games, and Kansas State lost. That was one of the key factors. Again, tonight he got an early foul trouble. I talked with Danny Manning, who coaches the big men, and said, what has this guy got to do? And he said, basically, he's got to be more mature. He said, it's just knowing how to use your body, how to get in front of people. But this is something you always talk about, Fran. He said, more importantly, he's got to beat his man to the spot. Do his defensive work early. There's too much pressure to guard after a pass in a scoring position for the young guy. It's a good point, Holly, because when you when you don't do your work early in the post, it's usually a lack of concentration and focus. Tiller just picked up his fourth. Arthur looks for point number 11, and he gets it. Checking into the Missouri lineup. 
and Tiller's going to come out of the lineup. Checking back in is Damari Carroll. And glad to see that his cramping situation is uh, improved. Although he's limping just a little. Your, your muscles do get sore when you cramp really hard. Keon Lawrence rattles it home. That's 19 points for him now. Only a sophomore, a young man from Weequayock High School in Newark, New Jersey. The Missouri staff found out about him when he attended a basketball camp at Mizzou as a junior. Vetted Melvin Watkins, assistant coach. Sasha Khan missed the shot, got the rebound. And on the final score. Sasha Khan and Darnell Jackson, two of the underrated Jayhawks. Take a look now. Look at the patience of Khan. Makes the move, stays with it. The Tigers don't block out. And the young man from Tomsk, Russia, gets a chance at a three-point play. By way of Florida Air Academy in Melbourne, Florida. Played for a really good prep school coach. Um, I'm sorry. Lions have picked up the foul. And that is 19 fouls against the Tigers. And we got 9.36 left to play in this ball game. Keon Lawrence. Well, rivalry week continues on Wednesday at ESPN 7 Eastern. UConn takes on Syracuse. 9 Eastern, the Duke Blue Devils face off against the Tar Heels of North Carolina. By the way, those in ACC markets are going to see Texas Tech against Baylor at 9 o'clock. So KU calls a timeout. And here's some of the matchups coming up on Rivalry Week presented by Cisco. Well, Duke is now number two in the country, playing great basketball. Don't really have a real low post presence, but four or five guards that Mike Krzyzewski can put on the floor and break your defense down. West Virginia is at uh, number 25 pit. I wonder if a Bob Huggins <laughs> is going to wear that, that outfit again anywhere, Woo! you know, anytime soon. That gold one with the black, black mock turtle neck. Halloween, maybe, Bob. <laughs> 9.29 left to play. Tigers talking over in their huddle. It was Brown who was trying to lead that conversation right there. Matt Brown earlier this year had a really defining moment as far as in a huddle where he took over the conversation. And uh, Coach Anderson just wound up not saying anything. It was the game against Purdue, and as a result, his ball club came out and had a 24 to 4 run. Cam Lawrence trying to pick up number 20. Nope. How good that ball movement is. But Arthur almost did not draw iron on that one. Gonna stay with the Hawks though. Kansas plays without a collective team ego. They do not care who scores. It's really hard for an NBA team to get a read on these guys because some nights Rusher Arthur will be almost invisible offensively. Chalmers for three. Oop. Good example right there. Arthur read the double team, kicked it out. Long three here. Matt Lawrence could not get it. Rush at the other end. Kisses it high off the glass. your question. From there, a guy by the name of Jordan who played in North Carolina who had a similar situation as far as selfless at times, surrounded by good players, and his head coach wanted it to be five and not one. Uh, uh, the old joke that Dean Smith was the only guy to ever hold Michael Jordan under 20. And there's a little bit of truth to that with Kansas. Because if you really think about it, Darrell Arthur could have came out, put his name in last year, would have been a first-round pick. Remember, Brandon Rush could be gone wrong, minus the knee injury. 
first foul on Rush. Going to be the seventh team foul against the Jayhawks. You know, when people talk and ask us about why Kansas is so good, we've watched these guys grow up. Brandon Rush was ready to put his name in the NBA draft after his sophomore year. The knee injury held him back a year. Arthur got good advice to come back. So it's a much more experienced, but just as talented team as the Jayhawk teams we've seen the last two years. Six. Matt Lawrence gets his first. 68 and 8, Ron, this team has been. This is Matt Lawrence's first point. It comes at the 8.02 mark of the second half. And he misses the second one. <laughs> Mike Anderson thought the ball was going the other way, and he started applauding the call. Well, he was trying to sell that call to Ted <laughs> Hillary. <laughs> Under eight minutes. Dished it, missed by the first <laughs> player, and wound up right in the arms of his teammate, Damari Carroll. See Kansas playing at a nice pace right now. Good ball movement. Running some clock also. Yep. No ball stoppers. Well, Brandon Rush, 14 points quietly. He does it from outside and using the bounce. Soft off the glass. Kansas by 16. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Bud Light. Endless refreshment from start to finish. Bud Light keeps it coming. And in part by Pontiac, the official performance machines of the NCAA. Coming up immediately following the game on Sports Center, much more on Bob Knight's legacy in his career. He steps down as head coach at Texas Tech, finishing a 42-year career. That's coming up on Sports Center. Okay, Reese, we got seven minutes and 12 seconds left in this one at a 16 point lead by the Jayhawks. And let's go to Holly Rowe. Well, tonight you see Brandon Rush in a Kansas uniform, but his older brother, Kareem Rush, was an all time great for Missouri. He talked to Coach Bill Self before the game and said, hey, why did Brandon choose Kansas over Missouri? And he said he wanted to create his own identity. He wanted a different experience than his brother Kareem had. Now, Kareem is in the NBA playing with the Pacers, and I caught up with him a few weeks ago, and he said the thing he's really proud of Brandon for is that Brandon has really developed his game. He said coming out of high school, Brandon wasn't a three-point shooter, he wasn't a defender, and he's made himself into those in college. Well, he has done just that, and his friend talked about a little bit earlier in this half that he's made himself a defensive player of note for that matter. Well, and it's interesting. He's the leading scorer in the Big 12, 15 a game for the Jayhawks, but he's only led the team in scoring in one of those games. Very consistent. But Butterfield right there. He picked up his second foul just a while ago. He could take that uh, put back a hundred times and not miss a one. Butterfield bounced it right at the feet of his teammate JT Tiller. JT did not have a prayer in catching that one. He did a, uh, he did a baseball throw. And a very large one. Mm -hmm. Butterfield goes to the bench. Carroll is going to get a breather. He's limping noticeably. Could be cramping again. I mentioned earlier, Ron, this is a good test for Kansas because you see a little 2 2 1 press by Missouri. We've seen various presses, various zone offenses. Good recognition by the Jayhawks. Collins, really a trap on him, and he got it away to Chalmers. This is Rush. Consistency. You're almost surprised when he misses the open three. 19 points for him. Quietly. Brown's pass tip. 
Collins over to Chalmers and the easy run out. Now remember Lawrence and Tiller have played a lot of minutes in the last couple games for Mike Anderson. It's starting to take its toll. 79 to 56. I mentioned no ball stoppers, Ron. They get rid of the ball as soon as they find an open man. Arthur, quick reversal on the turnaround. Timeout, Missouri. A 9-0 run. And it means 81-56 Jayhawks. Well, one of the enduring landmarks here in Lawrence is the Eldridge Hotel. The Eldridge was burned down by Huntrell's Raiders during the Kansas-Missouri Border War. That was in 1863. Well, the hotel has been completely renovated. History still lingers. We've got a, a room in the hotel which is supposedly haunted. Um, it's, it supposedly has the portal to the other side where the ghosts come back and forth. Uh, there's been some activity that happens in that room. We've had people that, that rent out that room specifically just to go ghost hunting. Uh, supposedly the ghost is Shaler Eldridge, the old owner of the Eldridge Hotel with the namesake, of course, and, and he haunts the hotel. And we've never had any, any problems with him. He's, he seems to be a good ghost and take care of people and never, never causes any disturbances. Okay, Ryan, nice job. I, you need to know our producer is the one who stayed in that room uh, the last couple of nights and has acted really strangely today. So, uh, I... yeah, it, it, it's a great old hotel. Now, my, I don't know if my shower head was haunted a little bit, but uh, otherwise, we always enjoy coming to the Eldridge. Actually, I said today that my producer had been acting strangely uh, and it was being very kind but the season he has acted strangely he stayed in that room before huh Matt Lawrence boy put up an air ball wow talk about being spooked and like Rush is not even in the game right now Jackson traveled Sasha Khan gets the call. He'll come right back out on the floor to replace Arthur. Well, remember Missouri playing without Stefan Hanno, broken jaw, and an altercation last Sunday morning. Leading scorer, one of the best guards in this league, and they are shorthanded. Arthur, by the way, 13 points and five rebounds for him. I don't know if we'll see him again this evening. Boy, Tiller. He continues to light him up, doesn't he? Yep. Only a sophomore, part of the youth movement. You know, Mike Anderson inherited so many players. Next year, you'll see his players. That's right. Or some of them. A anyway. lot more of them. Six recruits, a transfer sitting out. And a lot of these guys on track to graduate. Collins lost the ball, and it has not been a blue fingered night for him, has it? Nope. He's got three turnovers. I always call him a punt returner. He runs a few back. He'll fumble a couple. But an exciting player. Stewart, nice drive to the basket. Knocked out of bounds. Touch last with the Tigers. It'll stay with the Jayhawks. And we know these teams don't like each other, Ron, but on Saturday in Colorado, when the score went up, that K-State had lost to Missouri, the half of Kansas population in that arena gave the Tigers a big roar, but Bill Self said that would be short-lived, their, uh, their respect uh, for the Tigers. It's a great rivalry. It's always an interesting trip up to Boulder when the Jayhawks are playing up there. There's all those uh, West Kansas wheat farmers who never get to see them play and follow this school, buy tickets and go to Boulder, and it is a pro KU crowd there. I tell you, Jeff Bizdelic's team did a great job on uh, they did, Saturday. Didn't they? Yes, they it did. It out, man. Yep. I think Jeff will wind up doing a very good job there. He's a good coach. Yes, he is. Young Mr. Anderson comes into the ball game, son of the coach, number 13. And we'll take a timeout. 347 remaining. 21-point lead. Jayhawks.
51 to 60 our score 347 remaining you know you go back to the football season this is November 24 2007 Kansas came into the game second nationally averaging almost 46 points a game but uh, they fell behind 21 to nothing Chase Daniel is 40 for 49 361 and three touchdowns and Tony Tipple ran 22 times for 98 yards and Missouri won it 36 to 28. Both teams will have a lot of players back next year. Of course, Chase Daniel. I think Kaufman's coming back. Isn't he, Ron, the tight end? Yeah. Well, he was. Yeah, he was a junior. I think that's a smart move on his part. Yeah, what a good ball player. Yeah. Yeah. He's so got a younger brother who's a backup quarterback at yeah. K State. Lion. Good heavens, he got it. Wow. Well, Rush knows that. Well, as yeah. you talked about, they That's have right. played together. No right. surprise from him. Brandon Rush. Arthur. Uh, nope. Well, at halftime, the old house. Now I'm going to lose. Going to give me trouble for saying old, but <laughs> that, that field has been around for a while. But they got new facilities, practice facility. And also coaches offices that are being built right now. Excellent X and O guy, great recruiter. Talked often about how he manages his great talent. Comes a trap on Chalmers, steps through, and uh, the ball was turned over, stolen right back by KU. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Collins for three. Not a lot of offensive weaknesses. Can score inside and out. Each in transition. Another example right there. Lawrence getting all the way to the basket. But Keon's had a heck of a night. Yes, he has. 23 points for him. 24 Texas Tech. A couple weeks ago, he's taken advantage of Hannah's uh, 25. They just yep. added the other two. Yep. Screen out high by Khan, and uh, then he moves away at a foul by a Volkus, and I think it's Sayonara for him. And the administrators don't really care for it, do they? No, they do not. Keon Lawrence, by the way, that's a career high for him, 25 points. You, know, you see, Leo Lyons has provided a nice offensive punch. Lawrence, a sophomore. Lyons, a junior. 12 points for him, 5 of 10 from the field. A couple of rebounds. You notice not as many not any actually of the young faces who normally come into the ball game at this time have entered play. This is the board award. Well I could be wrong. Bill is walking down the bench right now and those youngsters are going to get an opportunity to play against the Missouri Tigers but it'll happen in the last minute of the ball game. Great hustle play underneath and shaken up a little bit is uh, Sharon Collins. And he almost made that darn thing. Well, the guy you got to watch for now as uh, they're about to empty their bench, Connor Tehan, young man from Leewood, Kansas, who's got 43 points in 52 minutes. Jeremy Case is about to come in. Matt Kleinman, Matt a junior out of Overland Park, Kansas. And who else do we have over there? Oh, Tyrell Reed. 